Jess from Jess the Curl. And all right, I have notes. <laughs> so I hope to keep this as short as possible, but if you know me, you know I've never shown up to do a video with notes before, so fingers crossed. But if you know me, you know I keep it pretty real around here. So today we're gonna talk about hair loss, which is not something we've ever talked about before, but it's something that we probably need to talk about. Um, so we're gonna get kind of real and a little potentially embarrassing for me <laughs> and maybe you, but it's something that happens. And so I'm 41 now. <laughs> what the hell? When did that even happen? I don't know. But like a lot of women of all ages, my thyroid is just all out of whack. And I'm pretty sure that is the technical medical term for it. And with thyroid out of whackness comes hair loss sometimes. And on top of that, I'm just going to be super honest, whatever, um, and not worry about embarrassing myself because it's too late. Um, I take a migraine prevention medication that also the side effect is hair loss. So I've got a double whammy going on here. And I luckily started out with way more hair than anybody ever should have. <laughs> like way more. So I think it's gonna be okay, but I do notice it. Um, I notice it more so in regard to my hair is more frizzy and it's more dry. And I don't know if you can see it. I am very aware of it, like right now, frizzy up here over there there's one spot back here that's really annoying the heck out of me today um so we're gonna talk about some of this stuff because i get questions from you guys and i know there's for every one of you that's not asking a question there's more of you or for every one of you that is asking a question there's more of you that aren't because you just don't take the time or you're embarrassed or whatever but uh i looked it up and 20 million American women have a thyroid problem and 60% of you don't even know about it. So this is something that's happening to a ton of us. Like we might as well talk about it, right? So I've been trying to figure out like what to do to compensate for this hair loss. Like that's definitely happening as I see it. Um, luckily again, I've got a ton of it. So a lot, another thing that like, in addition to just losing hair if you have a thyroid problem or a medication side effect, your hair can be getting finer, like the hair that you do still have, like as it grows out, can be finer and weaker. So like you're more prone to breakage with the hair that you still have. So like, thanks a lot, eh? <laughs> we just wanna keep going with our beautiful hair. Um, so Jessica products don't have protein in them because most hair lines have protein in every product. So the cumulative effect is that protein in excess can be drying to your hair. And so when I was developing the products way back in the day, 15 years ago, holy, I was like, we don't need to have excess protein and then dry out your hair. So if you need protein, you can seek it out somewhere. So, what I've been doing, because my products that I use exclusively don't have protein, I've just been doing infrequent protein treatments to sort of bring a little bit of protein into my routine to strengthen my hair, to reduce any breakage that could be occurring because my God, <laughs> with the hair that you're not losing, you definitely don't want it breaking, right? So I just go to Sally's and get this product. It's, you can get a little two ounce bottle, or they have a 16 ounce bottle as well, I believe, called Neutral Protein Filler. And it's just this, it's like as thin as water, really. Um, but I would just take a little, two, or two tablespoons or so, put it in another bottle with some deep treatment, shake it up, and use it with my deep treatment. And not very often though, like maybe once every three weeks, because you don't want to overdo the protein. So that's something you can do, or if you're not as brand loyal as I am, plenty of products out there have protein in them. So 
I wouldn't know what to recommend because I'm pretty brand loyal, but the occasional protein treatment can help restore some strength and elasticity so you're not breaking your hair uh, as it thins out. And in that vein, doing more frequent moisturizing deep treatments without protein, just to get that moisture in there because it will, you're, it's drying. I mean, the protein is, and then I'm just noticing from my experience, my hair is more dry. So I'm doing my deep treatment more often. So of course I'm gonna recommend Jessica Curl deep conditioning treatment because it's amazing. It's very moisturizing. So there's that. And then all of the like best practices that I've been throwing at you for years and really, really emphasizing all of that is so much more important if you're trying to reduce frizz because I don't know if your experience has been the same as mine but again I'm just noticing this more as an extra frizz problem more so than a less hair problem because clearly I still have quite a bit of hair but I'm noticing that I have a little bit more trouble with frizz, <laughs> which I'm loath to admit, but whatever. Again, this is all about keeping it real because we all are in this together. Um, so all the stuff that I've been hounding into you for 15 years, it's just even more important now. So like applying your products to soaking wet hair, extra important because again, as I've been saying, when you think about frizz, it's little hairs that have escaped from the pack, right? And you don't see frizz when your hair is soaking wet. So you wanna get those styling products in there when your hair is least likely to frizz, and then it'll be less likely to frizz as the day progresses. So again, I keep my products, my styling products in the shower. And the minute that shower turns off, you're getting those styling products in there. So if you haven't been doing that, give it a shot. Um, and then all of the whole don't touch your hair stuff. I mean, as you're diffusing, if you do diffuse, just try to touch it the least amount that you can while you're diffusing it and really use that diffuser to scrunch it instead of your hands. The least amount of hand in hair as possible will really, really help limit the frizz. And that goes double, triple, extra for when your hair is air drying. Don't touch it. Don't let your husband or wife, anybody touch it. Don't let your, oh, imagine if you have your baby touching your hair, try really hard not to. Or in my case, my puppy's little puppy feet get stuck in there. Um, so just no hands in the hair while your hair is drying. Because frizz, we're all just trying to eliminate the frizz. Um, and you can hear my puppy, she's back there. The poor little dog, she's been locked in the kitchen all morning because she, We'll just say she's got a little tummy trouble. <laughs> Poor dog. Um, so another thing, oh yeah, if you do plunk your hair, try doing it for less time. Um, I've noticed that the longer that I have my hair plunked in the towel, the more apt it is to frizz as, as it goes on. So I just do it for as long as it takes me to get dressed and then I'm taking that towel off and getting the diffuser going and that seems to be helping and then another thing that i just made up recently um because part of my issue that i've noticed is that i'm experiencing a lack of volume at the roots because when you start losing hair you don't notice it from the bottom it's coming out from the top so i've noticed that i have a little bit of a root volume issue and so what I've been doing is after I finish blow drying, plunk it again for five minutes or so. Um, and that gives me some root volume that seems to be helping. Um, and others of you who are into the clipping, you know, clipping at the roots, that's another option. I've never had success with that personally, so I don't have good tips for that. But if you Google that or ask one of your curly hair expert hairstylists, they'll definitely help you with that. I'm just not a font of information for that because it's just not work for me. Um, and then definitely cut your hair in extra layers so that you can get that volume. You know, you don't want, this is not the time to let the triangle head grow back out, <laughs> right? And then 
Um, biotin. You know, we all know that taking biotin helps your nails and your hair grow, and definitely this is the time when that would help. Um, we're keeping it real, so I'm gonna get extra super real here. The biotin doesn't know where to stop, right? So, <laughs> facial hair could grow too. So just keep that in mind. I'm just saying, I read that on the internet and it made a lot of sense to me. Um, it's a thing. So I also noticed that biotin definitely increases your appetite for some reason. I like that because the migraine medication that makes me lose my hair makes me lose my appetite. <laughs> so it all sort of balances out. Um, and the other thing too is you want to nourish your hair from the inside and that sounds like a cliche, but it's totally true. So extra protein in your diet and extra healthy fats in your diet are super helpful to your hair. You want, you know, you need that in your hair to help it be healthy and not super dry. So that's everything I have on my list and I hope it helps. I don't know if it does, but these are the things that I've incorporated into my routine and into my sort of lifestyle to try to help. And you know what? The last thing, and this is really hard for me to say because it's not something I'm good at in any way in life. Acceptance. It sucks. But it's true. I mean, like, I know I've got some frizz happening. What am I going to do about it, right? Like not much it's just there and we have to sort of deal with some of these things right yep so shall i get the puppy puppies make everything better Winnie, come here baby come here poor little baby you've been locked in the kitchen all morning she's had a rougher day than we <laughs> <laughs> they really do make everything better. You are so squirmy. She's been locked in the kitchen all morning because I don't trust her because of her tummy troubles. Yeah, so when in doubt, you're losing hair, you got some frizz, just go grab your puppy. <laughs> I hope you guys have a good day. And if you have, if I missed anything, and if you have any tips on this, feel free to leave it in a comment on whichever platform you heard this video because we are all on this together. Frizz and all. Have a good day, you guys. <laughs>